Hey, Faith Family, I hope that you're off to a great start with the 21 days of fasting and prayer. This is Pastor Brian from the Ridgeville campus. I hope that as you're leaning into God and, and you're drawing closer to Him, you can feel and sense that He's drawing closer to you as well in this time as we just seek Him and get to know His heart better for, for us as a church as well as for our community as we intercede on behalf of it. I want to take a moment right now to share a little word of encouragement with you and maybe a little bit of direction as we pray together and seek God together uh, out of Deuteronomy chapter 6. And I'll lean into it. It's found in verses 4 through 9. And it says this, Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving to you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you're on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gate. You know what I love about this passage? It's really twofold in the passage itself. It's speaking directly to us as believers in Christ, those who are found in Christ, that the idea of investing in the next generation, our youth, isn't optional. It's something that's essential. And what I've learned about this is that if we won't invest what God has given us uh, as a part of our faith, as a part of our hope, a part of our eternity, the good news of Jesus Christ, if we we want to invest that and influence our youth with it, they will be influenced by the world and what the world wants to give them the most. And so we have to have a heart after the next generation. We have to take a lesson from this passage and what it says there, that there's always time for Jesus in every moment of life, not just when we're on the road, but when we're coming home, when we're lying down, when we're getting up, uh, wherever we are, we need to be sharing the good news of Christ with the next generation and letting them know that they're not the future church. They are already the church uh, of, of Jesus Christ themselves if they've professed their faith in him and encourage them to take bold and courageous steps to live out their faith in the midst of a world that is just uh, teaching them uh, that what we value is, is, is to be written off, and, and we want to hold tight to that. So can we just take a moment right now to pray for the next generation? Let me lead us in a prayer. Father God, I just thank you for the youth of, of our nation and of the nations. Lord, we just pray, Father, right now and intercede on behalf of them, Lord. Help us to be parents, Lord, and, and people, spiritual fathers and mothers who will invest our, our, our faith and our knowledge and our, our, of what we've learned uh, in following you in them, Lord. Help us to make disciples out of them and raise them up and give them boldness, give them courage, Lord, in, in the midst of, of wherever they are, whether in school or at home, learning, distant distantly, Lord, to, to have the courage, Father, to stand on what they value in such a, a world that is, is just telling them that their values are not what the world values. So God, I just pray right now, Lord, that we would help them to stand strong and that we would be uh, models and, and role models that they can follow in our own faith, that they will learn how to take that stand as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all so much.